Gopi Jan Balabha Jaya Giri Varadhari Jaya Giri Varadhari Gopi Jai Radha Madhava Jai Akunja Bihari Jai Yashodanandanam Raja Janaranjana Yashodanandana Andraja Chanaranjana Yashodanandana Andraja Chanaranjana Yashodanandana Andraja Chanaranjana Yamuna Tira Banachari Yamuna Tira Banachari Jai Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Kare Krishna, Kare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Kare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Kare Rama, Kare Rama, Kare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Kare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Shishi Radha Govinda Ki Jai, Shishi Gorni Tai Ki Jai, Itai Gaur Premadandi, All Glories to the Samuel Devotees, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We are reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is Chapter 10 The Opulence of the Absolute Verse 11 Tesham evanu kampartam aham agyana jam tamaha nashayami atma bhavasto gyana dipena bhasvata tesham for them eva certainly anu kampartam to show special mercy aham I Agyana Jam due to ignorance Tamaha darkness Nashayami dispel Atma Bhava within their hearts Staha situated Gyana of knowledge Dipena with the lamp Bhasvata, glowing. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, by Charna Ravinda Bhaktivaranta Swami, Shil Prabhupada Ki To show them special mercy, I, dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. Purport. When Lord Chitani was in Benares, promulgating the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thousands of people were following him. Prakashananda Saraswati, a very influential and learned scholar in Benares at that time, derided Lord Chaitanya for being a sentimentalist. Sometimes philosophers criticize the devotees because they think that most of the devotees are in the darkness of ignorance and are philosophically naive sentimentalists. Actually, that is not the fact. There are very, very learned scholars who have put forward the philosophy of devotion. But even if a devotee does not take advantage of their literatures or of his spiritual master, if he is sincere in his devotional service, he is helped by Krishna himself within his heart. So the sincere devotee engaged in Krishna consciousness cannot be without knowledge. The only qualification is that one carry out devotional service in full Krishna consciousness. The modern philosophers think that without discriminating, one cannot have pure knowledge. For them, this answer is given by the Supreme Lord. Those who are engaged in pure devotional service, even though they be without sufficient education and even without sufficient knowledge of the Vedic principles, are still helped by the Supreme Lord, as stated in this verse. The Lord tells Arjuna that basically 
there is no possibility of understanding the supreme truth, the absolute truth, the supreme personality of Godhead, simply by speculating. For the supreme truth is so great that it is not possible to understand him or to achieve him simply by making a mental effort. Man can go on speculating for several millions of years, and if he is not devoted, if he is not a lover of the supreme truth, he will never understand Krishna or the supreme truth. Only by devotional service is the supreme truth, Krishna, pleased, and by his inconceivable energy, he can reveal himself to the heart of the pure devotee. The pure devotee always has Krishna within his heart. And with the presence of Krishna, who is just like the sun, the darkness of ignorance is at once dissipated. This is a special mercy rendered to the pure devotee by Krishna. Due to the contamination of material association through many, many millions of births, one's heart is always covered with the dust of materialism. But when one engages in devotional service and constantly chants Hare Krishna, the dust quickly clears and one is elevated to the platform of pure knowledge. The ultimate goal, Vishnu, can be attained only by this chant and by devotional service and not by mental speculation or argument. The pure devotee does not have to worry about the material necessities of life. He need not be anxious because when he removes the darkness from his heart, everything is provided automatically by the Supreme Lord, who is pleased by the loving devotional service of the devotee. This is the essence of the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. By studying Bhagavad Gita, one can become a soul completely surrendered to the Supreme Lord and engage himself in pure devotional service. As the Lord takes charge, one becomes completely free from all kinds of materialistic endeavors. Okay. Tesham evanu kampartha mahama jnana jamta maha nashami atma bhavasto jnana dipena bhasvata to show them special must I dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. Mukam karoti vachalam pangum blanka etigirim yat kripatamaham bande shri gurum dinatharinam. Hare Krishna. So we all know that Bhagavad Gita, the knowledge that Krishna gives in Gita and in all other Vedic texts, is meant for practical application in our day-to-day -day life, right? It is not just meant for, Sri Prabhupada says, um, uh, recreation of armchair speculators, but it is meant for creating character practical applications. So this is proven by the very fact that Krishna gave Bhagavad Gita to Vivasvan. Well, of course, to Arjuna, but even before that, to, to, to the Sun God. Yeah, many, many millions of years ago. And, uh, and then Vivasvan gave the same knowledge to his son, Mano, the low giver of the mankind, and then this knowledge went to the saintly kings, the Rajarshis, and these are all very practical people. They are not some hermits living somewhere in the cave. They are protecting people. They are managing planets, they're managing kingdoms. So this is practical knowledge. And it is very exciting to think that you can study this knowledge, of course, under the guidance of a spiritual teacher, saintly people, and actually apply it in your life and see for yourself the result. It is, it is exciting career in front of all of us. So, it is 
the same knowledge that has been given millions millions of years ago to Vivasvan, then to, uh, to Arjuna, that we have now uh, in front of us by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. And I've been thinking, what are the practical lessons that we can uh, learn from Bhagavad Gita? Of course, there are innumerable lessons, and they're all practical. <laughs> uh, but we'll mention a few of them, and we'll try to see how we can apply them in our practical life. Because theoretical knowledge cannot solve the problems of life. Some people say that philosophy, that means dry knowledge, uh, theoretical knowledge, can uh, save us only, only from previous or future calamities, but not from the present ones. When we uh, have problems in our lives, we need practical application, practical knowledge. And this is called vijnana in Sanskrit. There are two terms. One is jnana, that means theoretical knowledge, and then vijnana means applied knowledge. When we apply the knowledge in our life, then we internalize, we realize this knowledge. It becomes part of our value system, and we don't do things in different way anymore. So one of the first lessons we learned from Bhagavad Gita is the lesson that, Krishna, that Srila Prabhupada explains in this purport. Mental speculation is uh, inadequate. It's an um, improper, impossible method, way to understand the absolute truth. So in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, we know that uh, Arjuna, although he had uh, Krishna as his charioteer and advisor, Arjuna rejected, declined to perform his duties of a warrior. And he presented um, several arguments why he should not fight. And they were all uh, seemingly very lofty, very exalted arguments. For example, you can imagine this is the, the greatest battle in one of the greatest battles in, in human history. And then just before the battle commenced, then the main general, one of the main warriors from one of the armies, he suddenly feels compassion to, for uh, his own soldiers and for the, even for the opposite, for the enemy side soldiers. And then he decides to quit the battle. This will make probably great uh, plot for, uh, for a book or for a movie. And many people will acclaim, they will uh, glorify this extremely noble behavior because he saved many lives, right? He didn't want to fight. So when uh, Arjuna explained his reasons, some of them were, uh, for example, he, he said, well, uh, these are not um, ordinary people, okay? These are my superiors, my teacher, my um, military uh, guru, my grandfather. Um, so, um, and I have to kill them. Why? Just to attain a uh, material, transitory, temporary kingdom. This is not good, Krishna. Will you fight and kill your own guru, Sandipani Muni? Would you do that? But now you ask me to do that. And uh, even if I, let's say, if I win this battle, still, how will I enjoy life afterwards? I will have, I will have to kill all these relatives of mine, and then I cannot share my happiness. Everybody wants to share his happiness with, uh, with his dear, most lo loved ones. Uh, and then Arjuna also said that, well, this is sinful, of course. I will commit sin. Uh, sin will, uh, sinful reaction will uh, come and they will overcome me. And not, not only that, but when we kill all these kshatriyas, then what will happen? Women will become unprotected. And when women are unprotected, they become easily polluted. And then what happens? 
Varna Shankara will uh, flood the entire planet. Varna Shankara means unwanted generation. And then Krishna, uh, Arjuna says, this will uh, create a um, uh, hellish situation for everybody. So there were very nice arguments, but seemingly, but still after presenting all these learned so-called arguments, what was the result? Arjuna was still depressed. He still could not decide what to do. Uh, he himself admitted, Karpanya dosho pahatasva bhava prichami tvam dharma samudacheta. I am confused about my dharma, about my duty. I don't know what to do. And I cannot find a way to drive away this uh, depression, this despair that dries out my senses. So this is the result of mental speculation. It doesn't lead to uh, a real uh, solution. There is no escape from suffering just, just by mental speculation. And another Example for this, pro probably the best, one of the best at least examples is Lord Brahma himself. He was born in the beginning of this universe. He was born out of the lotus and then he appeared in the darkness and then there was nobody there. He was alone and he didn't, didn't have anybody to ask what to do, who am I, what is the purpose of my existence. So what, he, what did he do? He decided to, to speculate. He decided to find out on his own. And he had an idea. So he was the first scientist in the history of the universe. So he had this theory, scientific theory. And then he decided to, create, to make an experiment. So he followed, he went down the lotus stem and he tried to find the origin of this lotus. He did not succeed though, because he was positioned in the midst of this Garbudaka ocean, which fills up half the universe. Gigantic, enormous ocean, and there was violent wind, and there was these terrible waves. And when Brahma saw this, he was shocked and terrified. So he went back very quickly, back to the lotus. And then there he heard Tapa, Tapa, Tapasya and he understood that the Lord wants him to perform austerity. And then by this austerity, he pleased the Lord, and the Lord revealed the knowledge, Teni Brahma Hrivi Adi Kavaya, he revealed the knowledge inside Brahma's heart. So the first scientific independent attempt to establish the absolute reality failed. And in the same way, it, uh, Numberless other attempts failed in the history of the universe and they will fail in the future. They will fall in the future also. Because this is not the way to establish the reality. This is not the way to solve the problems of life. This is not even the way to identify which are the real problems of life. By mental speculation, people, they cannot even understand what is the real problem here. And what is the real problem of, human, of uh, material existence Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita, Janma, Mrityu, Jara, Vyadi, Dukkha, Dosha, Anudarshanam. The real problems are birth, death, old age, disease, not something else. So then what happened? So this is, we can say, the first uh, practical lesson for us. So we should not try to uh, understand the meaning of the human life on our own. This, this uh, burden is too heavy for us to bear. We need help. We should be sincere, honest, and humble enough to ask for help. That's normal. We are limited human beings. We are weak. We are uh, mortal. And we should be real enough to uh, admit this and to ask for help. And what happens when we ask for help? In the Bible it is said that those who ask, they, they, they uh, ask and they will receive, okay, and then knock on the door and the door will open for you. So Arjuna, he decides to uh, surrender to Krishna and to 
request him to become his guru. And this is a significant shift in their relationship because they are friends. And when Krishna hears that uh, now his friend wants to become his uh, disciple, uh, Krishna initially says, well, Arjuna, I don't want to become, I'm not your guru, go, if you, if you need guru, go to Vyasadev. <laughs> I'm your friend. Arjuna says, no, no, Krishna, only you can uh, help me, only you can uh, kill these demons of uh, doubts in my heart. And then Krishna accepts this uh, request from his dear devotee, and Srila Prabhupada explains that Krishna is responsive. That means Krishna himself, Krishna himself confirms this in Bhagavad Gita. He says, tamam tam aham. If his devotee approaches him with certain desire, Krishna is ready to fulfill this desire, especially with the pure devotees. So Krishna doesn't mind to take the role of a guru, and then later on, uh, Arjuna requests, Krishna, please show me your universal form. And Krishna shows the universal form. And then Arjuna says, well, this universal form is very terrifying. Please uh, remove this universal form. <laughs> I want to see your <clears throat> normal form. Then Krishna reveals the chatur Butch form and then the two-armed form, the most beautiful form of Krishna Shyama Sundara. And then at the end of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna asks Arjuna, are you clear of doubts? Can you now perform your duty? Because uh, Krishna is ready if Arjuna uh, would, would have said, no, I, I still have doubts. Shri Prabhupada in one place says, Krishna is ready to repeat the whole Bhagavad Gita from the beginning. So Krishna is uh, um, becoming very readily, very uh, affectionately, and with great pleasure, he becomes subservient to his devotee. So Krishna is responsive to his devotees, pure devotees' desires. And then when Krishna takes the role of a guru, the first thing he does as a real guru, he scolds his disciple. And he does this with a little smile, the Acharyas explain. Although internally, Krishna is ready to... Uh, to laugh at Arjuna because they are friends <laughs> and Arjuna is, <clears throat> Arjuna is showing such a lack of discrimination, which is amazing. Such, such a great warrior, uh, personal friend of Krishna, and he shows such, such confusion. Of course, we know this is by Krishna's will also. Arjuna is put into this illusion so that we can learn something. And then instead of laughing at him, which will be a uh, normal thing for a friend to do with a friend, Krishna just very slightly smiles and then he starts to deliver the transcendental knowledge and the first thing he tells Arjuna is you speak like a learned man but you are lamenting for something that is not worthy of lamenting. The, those who actually learn it, like you try to present yourself, they never lament for in the way that you do. And even before that, also, very interestingly, Krishna, when he first uh, encounters this uh, illusion that Arjuna is under, the reaction of Krishna is also very interesting, something that we can also try to apply in our life. When we uh, have a friend or a family member or somebody close to us who is in illusion, in Maya, uh, Krishna gives a very perfect example how to react. So Krishna says, Kutastva kashmalamidam vishame samopastitam annarya jushtam asvargyam akirti karam arjuna. From where these uh, impurities uh, come, came upon you, dear Arjuna, exactly in this uh, crucial moment before the battle, how this, how this happened. They don't lead, they will not lead you. Uh, they are, first of all, they are not befitting an arya, and they will not lead you to uh, kirti, to fame. Neither they will lead you to heaven. And then Krishna says, Klaibhyam mas magama aparta, naitatvamu papadyate, kshudram hrida dorbalyam tyakto tishta parantapa. Krishna says, this, this impurity, this illusion doesn't befit you. Uh, stand up and fight, you, um, parantapa, chastiser of the enemy. So Krishna does two things. 
first he recognizes that his friend is in illusion and he very openly uh, informs him about this. He tells him, you act uh, in an inappropriate way. This is nonsense. Klaibiam, that means you are impotent. Um, and for a kshatriya, this is, uh, <laughs> this is, you should not insult kshatriyas like this. It is stated in, in Shastra that one should never insult a kshatriya, even if it's, uh, he's a small, small, small kid. Never insult a kshatriya because kshatriyas, uh, they have li little bit difficulties in forgiving. They're not like the brahmanas. <laughs> They're not so much in sattva guna. So if you insult a kshatriya, even if he's small, he'll remember this and when he grows up, he'll become the king possibly, then he may take revenge. So never, don't do this. So Krishna, he doesn't mind because his dear friend, Arjuna is his friend. And then he honestly tells him, this is wrong, this is nonsense. But at the same time, Krishna says, but this is not you. This illusion that you are under, it's something else. I know who you, who you actually, who you really are, and you're different from this. So please, Stand up and fight. Take up your real identity of um, spirit soul, a servant of Krishna. So this is a lesson for us. So when we have to take the role, because sometimes we, take, we have to take the role of a guru, although we are not very qualified. Sometimes we are disciples. Sometimes we always exchange these positions because we are in different uh, stages of our life. So whenever we have to deal with this, we have to follow Krishna's example. We have to give the knowledge. At the same time, we should always give also the support, not just uh, criticizing, but giving very clear indication that we know the real stand of this person. And he's actually, we all, we all devotees. So even if we're under illusion, that's not us. This is the mind, this is the polluted intelligence, this is maya. Okay, so this is another uh, lesson we can learn, practical lesson. And then when Krishna accepts the role of a guru, uh, what he does? He tries to, uh, to comfort the depressed Arjuna first by explaining to him that Nobody will die at this battlefield. Not Tevaham, Jatu, Nasam, Not Fam, Neme, Janadipa, Not Chaiva, Nabavishema, Sarvavayata Param. Neither you nor me nor all of those kings, all of these kings uh, will, uh, will die, will, uh, none, of, none of us will cease to exist. We have been always existing in the, in the past and we'll be always existing in future. In other words, Arjuna should not lament for his family members because nobody will die. But because Krishna sees that just this theoretical knowledge doesn't remove, doesn't seem to remove Arjuna's depression, then the next thing Krishna does is uh, to give the process by which Arjuna can realize this knowledge, namely that he is a soul and everybody is a soul and we are all eternal. And which, pro which is this process? In interesting. Um, so, it is the only possible process for the level of, for our level that we are right now, and for the level of Arjuna. And this is the process of uh, Buddhi Yoga, or Karma Yoga, or uh, Krishna Consciousness. That means we have to perform our duties. I know that when you go to India, and many people, they like to quote this verse. Maybe this is the most popular verse amongst the Hindus. <laughs> so you have the right to perform your duty. But sometimes they skip the second part of the verse, which says, but you're not entitled to the results. Okay? So you have the right to perform your duty, but the results you should give to Krishna. At least part of the results, if you cannot give everything. <laughs> uh, so, Krishna urges Arjuna to perform his duty as a warrior, but to do this uh, with proper consciousness, with knowledge, 
with detachment for the results. And this is the only practical way for, for most of us, because we're not ready to uh, go and live in a, in a cave in the Himalaya or to join an ashram somewhere in a holy place. Um, everybody has a particular material, materialistic inclination. So Krishna sanctions this and he explains just by following this nature of yours uh, with knowledge, without attachment for the results, and if you do this for my pleasure, then gradually you become liberated. You advance and you come closer to me. So this is the process for spiritual advancement. And this is the most practical, the most natural, the easiest and the safest way. Okay, so these are three practical lessons we can learn from Bhagavad Gita. What's the time, by the way? Okay. Um, so, uh, we cannot understand reality by mental speculation. We need help. We have to approach spiritual master. We have to approach saintly person. We need to pray to God for intelligence. Krishna, when we do this, Krishna will respond. And we can try in our own life. We can see the result. And um, the most practical, the easiest, the most natural way to advance spiritually is to perform our duties with knowledge, without attachment for the result, and to sacrifice at least part of this result for Krishna. What else? Um, okay, anyway, thank you very much. So if, if, you, if you want to say something or have question or comment, yes, yes, please, <laughs> go ahead. Maybe, Mike. Okay. 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 I, okay. Thank. You. I'm not sure I understood fully what you said. Maybe you. Was never afraid. Yes. 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 Yeah. This is very good point. This is very good point. Yeah. Actually, you're right. Uh, Arjuna has fought and have killed many people before. And he never experienced uh, uh, such uh, identity crisis. He experienced this despair and depression because he had to fight with his own family members. And the reason why he declined to fight was simply because of family attachment. But he tried to cover up this by using all these lofty, exalted arguments, quoting Shastra, pretending to be non-violent sadhu, but actually he was motivated by the very uh, source of violence, which is egoistic attachment to the body and to everybody connected to my body. So this is uh, my body, me, my family, my nation, and we are against the rest of the world. So this is actually the real reason for, for violence, for, for uh, okay. Thank you very much.
side of Dharma. Yeah. And by side of Dharma, it's more very, yes, yes, Thank you. yes. Very good point. And we'll be uh, we'll be faced with this choice sooner or later in our life, all of us. Okay. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Itai Gaur Premanandey.